I'm very happy to have with us uh, tonight Yoshiharu Tsukamoto, who uh, is the architect of our building, um, the architect that runs Atelier Baobaum. When we reached out to Yoshi roughly a year and a half ago, uh, we probably sent the strangest, um, strangest brief uh, that the Guggenheim could send to an architect. Because usually what, uh, what you would expect from the Guggenheim is a request that in the first line says, can we get a super iconic building? Um, in Yoshi's brief, we did something different, and we asked Yoshi, can you design us a non-iconic building? Um, I think Yoshi thought it was a joke, uh, so it took us a while to actually convince Yoshi that it's, it really was, um, it was a different kind of project. Um, our ambition with this project was to get people in uh, from all, um, uh, all around the neighborhood, all around the city, um, and really create a public space, and a space that people can easily uh, uh, get into. I think we have... Um, well, got on a quite a, a great, uh, a great piece of architecture, and Yoshi will speak on that first, um, actually on the on the building, and then after that, um, we'll jump to some of his other uh, other projects. Um, thank you all for being here, and please, uh, please join me in welcoming uh, Yoshi. Ah, do I need that? Okay. Good evening. Uh, my name is Yoshi Haru Tsukamoto. Um, please call me Yoshi. I'm uh, one of the uh, two partner of Atelier Bauer. And um, so um, um, we, we established our office in 1992 when we were still students uh, in the Tokyo Tech. Uh, I and uh, Momoyo Kaijima together. And uh, basically, we, uh, um, we, we have designed many residential buildings in Tokyo. And, um, and also we did many urban research, uh, mainly in Tokyo, but uh, also other cities. And then um, we, our interest is uh, always uh, um, kind of li very lively space and uh, social aspect of the building and uh, also the <coughs> very uh, yeah, the the life, the the, the life and the, the relationship between life and architecture, uh, because uh, um, in nine un, until na yeah in 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 nineteen seventies, uh, architecture discussion in Japan was very much dominated by formalism. Of course, it, it was influenced by the United States discussion, American discussion and European discussion. And then <coughs> Japanese uh, architecture scene followed uh, contextualism, rationalism, uh, this kind of discussion imported from abroad. And then I was very frustrated uh, to, to, to be in such kind of situation and then from my student time, I, I believe I, I wanted to establish the theory of architecture and city, architecture, architecture and urbanism from, uh, from our city, Tokyo. And uh, <coughs> then we start to look at the city and, uh, and use, using the uh, methodology of typology we collected many different uh, funny and interesting buildings, which is rare, uh, rarely seen in Occidental country. And, uh, and then gradually we are interested in more and more on the quality of public space. So today's discussion is basically about public space. And uh, <coughs> what is public space today? Uh, because um, I studied in Paris and traveled in, the United, uh, in Europe and uh, uh, found a very beautiful uh, plaza in each city with uh, church and market. And, but uh, we don't have that kind of uh, space in, in Tokyo, in Japan. Um, the, of course, we have a public space, but uh, in very different uh, sense. For example, I like to give example of Sakura Cherry Blossom uh, Festival or party under the, under the cherry tree. It is uh, <coughs> something which is uh, 
not prepared as public space or urban space uh, initially, but uh, the moment uh, when cherry blossoms uh, at the beginning of uh, at the end of March and beginning of April, people go out to see cherry blossom and love them and uh, appreciate them and. Uh, uh, put the seed under the tree and start eat and drink and uh, sing and uh, so people are becoming very generous and very uh, how do you say cheerful and uh, and this is uh, the moment when you can see very different aspect of Japanese people. Uh, Japanese people are believed that they are very shy and uh, introversial, but uh, actually in that kind of moment they are very expressive and very open-minded. And uh, so, I through this experience observation, I found Japanese public space needs a sense of time. It's a kind of synchronicity with uh, nature. Like uh, when cherry blossom, uh, uh, when cherry tree blossom, uh, it's a moment all the people are invited by cherry to go out from the house and enjoy them. And um, so no one is asked to come, but the people people go out from the from the house and go to see the cherry. I, I think it is a very beautiful moment, and uh, this. Uh, is a kind of custom and, or habit which is embedded in the body of human beings of Japanese to enjoy this uh, moment of uh, cherry blossom and also it is uh, uh, the moment when people socialize very much and uh, people knows how to behave how to enjoy it so <clears throat> So then I start to realize that uh, uh, making a public space and a good public space always needs a sort of a, a, a canon of the behavior uh, embedded in the human body. So <coughs> it's not only the question of the uh, physical space. Of course, we need, we need a physical setting, better physical setting. But uh, without uh, any uh, uh, embodied uh, canons of the behavior, uh, manners of the behavior, the public space cannot be uh, practiced by the people. And uh, <coughs> so, I, I, I'm, I was very fascinated by finding this uh, uh, aspect because it's uh, I, it seems it seemed me something which go beyond the boundary of the uh, uh, proper or just professional architecture discussion. It can again bring back people to the to the to the part of the discussion, and uh, we can discuss with people with these kind of things, and uh, <coughs> this. Within, with, with this understanding of public space, we produced a series of uh, art installation in the framework of art exhibition. After published the book called Pet Architecture Guidebook, which is a collection of tiny small buildings in Tokyo, we started to be invited in the so many different uh, art biennale and triennale all over the world. And then in each uh, opportunity, we produced a kind of uh, a mobile structure or big furniture which stimulate the people's behavior, which is uh, familiar with them, but in a little bit different context. And uh, for example, I, I like to give one example. Uh, in Japan, we have a very nice uh, food store called Yatai, which is always 1.5 meters long because it is a size uh, which uh, the guy, the chef, can manage everything by, by, by himself. And, but, uh, and uh, the experience to have a dinner and drink in this Yatai place is very delightful because 
it's outside and you are part of the uh, member who sustains uh, the space of the restaurant on the street and uh, you can easily start talking about someone who you don't know next to you and uh, it's never happened in the uh, former restaurant and um, with, with this atmosphere everything uh, tastes good and uh, the, more, the time is also very, very memorable, uh, memorable. But uh, the, it is considered as the lowest class of the uh, food uh, service in the society. So this gap is quite uh, interesting for me to think about. And I was invited uh, by Tsumari Art Triennale, which is uh, uh, a kind of a sculptural uh, uh, exhibition in the uh, landscape in the rural side, countryside of Niigata Prefecture, which is a very north area of to Japan, with uh, so heavy snow in s winter. And uh, the curator asked us to make something which connects different venues, which are dispersed in the different uh, area of the city. And then I start. Uh, we, we propose this uh, yatai, but in a different uh, proportion, which is uh, 10 meters long. We made the uh, 10 meters long uh, food store yatai. Uh, we call it white and painted in white and called white limousine yatai. So I'm always, uh, uh, it's always uh, uh, interesting to see the limousine is uh, driving in front of the airport of the United States and uh, it doesn't look like comfortable and uh, very s s kind of uh, uh, funny and uh, um, stupid in a sense uh, <laughs> uh, as, a, as, a, as a vehicle. But uh, the intention is uh, really interesting to make the normal car more gorgeous and uh, luxurious and uh, stretch, okay, let's stretch the car into 10 meters long. This is a really funny operation. So I did the same things to the Yatai to bring the position of uh, this food store from the bottom of the uh, food service in the society to the maybe in the uh, two or three grade better. <laughs> and um, to invite people uh, on the street to have a dinner together uh, with 30 people at once. And it's a very nice dining space. And um, we also serve ourselves the sake and rice, which is a very specialties of this area. And uh, at first people, yes, people suddenly understand this is yatai and uh, they participate in this installation and uh, order uh, different menu and uh, enjoying this uh, uh, slight uh, kind of uh, differentiation from the daily uh, proportion of yatai and the daily experience of yatai. So in this kind of project, it is, it's very important not to make something totally uh, new, totally unfamiliar. It's important to work with uh, kind of type type or cliche uh, which is known by the people because if it's too new people don't know how to behave in that space so I'm our work is not only to show the shape of the of the physical uh, uh, physical shape of the building but uh, we like to create this kind of delightful moment by, by changing the context of the daily behaviors. And uh, <coughs> so a series of this project is called Micro Public Space. And then we, we were uh, called by um, uh, Guggenheim and uh, David. And then uh, I, 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 I tried to understand what they asked us. And then realize that it's all oh, okay. It's, it's a it's a very big version of a micro public space. So maybe we can we don't say micro, maybe small public space, and uh, <coughs> and then we start discussion. At first, okay, from now on, I talk about uh, this 
uh, Guggenheim log structure, BMW Guggenheim log structure. Uh, at the beginning, they expect, curator team expect us to have uh, lecture space, exhibition space, workshop, workshop space, cafe space, toilets, office, storage, etc., etc. On in total 500 square meter, 5,000 square feet. And then, okay, okay. And uh, they also want have a, a nice open public space. And then we, for the first meeting, we made a, a presentation on uh, borrowing some images from uh, a city loggia, like uh, Loggia del Lanzi in Firenze, or some small loggia, uh, also city loggia in the, in the Croatian country. Uh, I visited the, uh, just before the, the presentation. They have very beautiful uh, uh, loggia at the gate, at the entrance of the city. It's a mountain city and it's totally open, vacant. So they can use this space for wedding, for market, for court, for, and m many kind of things, funeral. And, but uh, basically it is vacant and just giving super nice view towards the landscape of Historian uh, Peninsula, Historian um, and Adriatic coast. And, uh, <coughs> And also I show um, yeah, some of uh, our micro-public space projects. And then I, yeah, I said to the team, uh, curator's team, that I, okay, maybe I, uh, it's better to make something very generous space uh, where anyone can come and it's very, they are all very invited and uh, so it might be the space like uh, City Loggia, uh, which is basically vacant, and, but uh, sometimes with the people's activities, it's totally turned into different uh, uh, space. And, uh, and then we continue to uh, discussing. And uh, at the moment when we have to really choose uh, a site, we had uh, many uh, ca candidate sites in New York, and uh, several of them are in the park, like Central Park, or the, um, I don't remember the name, but uh, more or to the, close to the river. And, uh, but uh, we, we discussed that it is too open. We, we want to make this love in the in more integrated area in the, in the community uh, activity in the community. So we, we found several spaces, something like this, the space in between building. Actually, this space uh, was occupied by tenant, uh, tenement uh, apartment until 1985 or seven, and uh, it was collapsed. Uh, and uh, then they, the city government destroyed the building and kept this space as vacant. And they, uh, they were planning to uh, make a uh, uh, park or pocket park in this space. So they offer us to use our team to utilize this space. Yeah, but uh, okay, the context and neighborhood is very good, very interesting. Uh, it's lower east side and uh, the building, the space in between uh, two buildings uh, really match uh, with our career. We, we, ha we had so many experience to make uh, a building in, in a narrow space in, in a very densely built area in Tokyo. And, uh, but the problem is uh, we can't make 500 square meter uh, buildings in this property. If we do that, uh, if we really want to do that, we have to raise the stories, uh, second or third. And then we might have a big problem of the circulation, elevators, escalators, to more, more uh, budget and more cost to realize this. 
And then uh, I realized that, okay, m my, it, maybe we are now uh, dominated by the metaphor of the e exhibition space. Because uh, we start to think about some sort of uh, a multi purpose exhibition space uh, at first, which is very open, like a city loggia. But uh, of course, it is an uh, offer from uh, uh, Guggenheim. So, exhibition space is, was, uh, was a dominant uh, metaphor in my, in, my, in my mind at the beginning. But uh, since uh, space is not big enough, then I realized that, okay, maybe it's n now it's better to change the metaphor from the uh, exhibition space into theater space. Because if we use the metaphor of the theater, we can multiply the use of the ground level in a um, multiple way. And uh, then I start to imagine the flying tower uh, flying loft, uh, traveling uh, uh, from one city to another city and uh, install some vacant space and produce activities uh, uh, below this uh, fly loft. And so I explained to the curator's team that, uh, okay, let's think about uh, 10 weeks long uh, theater play uh, from the beginning of August till end of uh, uh, to the, the beginning of October. So le if you can agree to, to, if you can imagine to make lo very long theater play, uh, which lasts 10 weeks long, I think this, uh, this lab can be uh, designed in the direction of the theater-like space. And then they totally agreed. They, they, they quickly understand, understood our, our proposal. And then we start to uh, uh, design this structure. And then firstly, we thought uh, how, how we can make this structure, which kind of material it's uh, appropriate for this program. And then we start to think about carbon fiber, which is very light and strong. And it's also very common in the new type of car. Uh, for example, BMW also utilize carbon fiber for, for, for car, for the body. And, uh, but uh, in, in architecture, it is not, not much utilized uh, until today. So it could be first case fast building which really apply carbon fiber for the main structure. So, and I imagine uh, if the space is made of the framework of uh, uh, carbon fiber, I think it is really light and w probably we feel a very, uh, uh, the space will be very light and, uh, uh, and it's also uh, good to invite people from outside to go in. And um, then we visited many theater and uh, asked the specialist who is, who is a planner of the theater to how to make a theater, temporary theater in the city. And then I, we, we found this uh, uh, hoist system which, he, which suspend any kind of instruments above the stage and uh, when you want to change or ch change the scene you can pull them down and uh, create a, another setting and then with this system uh, in one side of the space uh, from the uh, first expectation uh, we can produce a uh, uh, lecture space like this. This is lecture mode. Or workshop space, this afternoon it was a lecture. Or the film viewing space. Yeah, yesterday's uh, afternoon we, they had a, uh, we had a uh, film viewing. And or the gathering for, for example, big dining, uh, inviting people. And then, so this 
And also the operation of changing the uh, scene is also very in interesting performance for the people who, who are who crossing, who are, who are walking on the sidewalk. So if you walk on the sidewalk, someone, something, is, something came down and uh, form a very in a different space. And, uh, and when you come back, uh, the scene is uh, totally different. Oh, what's this? This is, uh, yeah, two, day, two, two hours before it was a lecture space, but now it is workshop space. What's happening? So this is a very, it gives a strong animation on the space. And uh, this animation is really uh, catch at attention of the people to come and uh, to have a communication and start talking about the future city and, uh, and uh, in this time the theme is confronting comfort, what is comfort for our lifestyle, for our life. And uh, so this is uh, the, uh, uh, the story. And um, okay, uh, so all these kind of uh, um, thoughts uh, uh, always um, as, how to say, um, examined or tested uh, among in, in Atwe Bawa with uh, a world uh, behavior. We use a lot this word. Um, we watch the behavior uh, to, to, as a condition to design the building and design the space. And uh, for example, yeah, this space has full of behavior. So the building itself, the definition of the building itself, in physical sense, it's uh, almost minimum. But uh, I think it's full of uh, uh, behavior. And uh, this, this proportion uh, uh, between behaviors, amount of behavior, and uh, uh, definition uh, as a physical building, I think it is very new. It's very in interesting. To, and uh, I'm very fascinated with this. And also we see uh, the behavior of the uh, heat, uh, which go up from, from the ground level. So if people, many people come, every people uh, can be uh, considered as a 80 watt uh, heater. So you heat the air, so heated air goes up. And uh, so because why we crowd the building by the mesh uh, to let warm air go out or cool air comes in. And also it reduces the uh, wind load, uh, which gives uh, a horizontal load to the building structure. <coughs> and uh, to, how do you say, to, uh, to make this uh, heated air in f frequently, we also install several fans uh, on, the, on the ceiling. And uh, then yesterday I found some area of the white mesh, which is inside. Uh, this is double mesh. The inside is white and the outside is black. So this uh, double mesh produces moire, moire effect. It also moves by, uh, by the wind. So moire pattern always changing. So it's also the behavior of the wind and the behavior of the light. And, but uh, okay, I, 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 what I wanted to say is I found the very dirty part, which turns into brown now on the white mesh. But uh, this is the destination of the uh, fun. So fun is uh, always blowing at that direction, and this, and then this part of the white mesh catch more dust in the air, and uh, uh, it's fixed. Uh, it, the dust is fixed on that part uh, uh, than other part. So <clears throat> I think uh, this is also one trace of the behavior of the dust. So I. I and also we have a, a tent on the roof and uh, the light is always diffused by this tent. And uh, here we have always very constant uh, uh, lightness 
and uh, it uh, makes uh, people's people more beautiful <laughs> and uh, I believe and uh, and uh, of course the space is uh, not enclosed so wind is always running through this is also behavior of the wind so we are we are and uh, of course and we are just next to the street of the Houston, which has heavy traffic. So I don't know how many cars passing in front of this building, but uh, this is also very important behavior in the city. It's also produce noise. And uh, some ambulance car, sometimes ambulance car or uh, police car come with a siren. And then it's so loud, it's so noisy. And then people on the, on the desk uh, uh, who, uh, at the a workshop uh, have to wait for a moment and it also affects the behavior of the people and now people learn how to deal with this type of things this, this type of unexpected behavior but it's always but the, with this uh, uh, new manner we accept this uh, different behavior and uh, so this space is to very open to many different behavior and uh, this is very important uh, to make better uh, public space and uh, delightful space. This is uh, what I'm, I believe. And uh, okay, maybe so. So I, I need. Yeah. For example, this is the cage which store the tables for the workshop, and uh, it's. Hold, it's held by two hoists you can control by a remote controller and this lamp uh, can go down and we have a more cage for chairs where uh, you are sitting now and uh, so yeah it's uh, I think uh, in Japan it is very hard to do it because we always think about the uh, earthquake and uh, something hanging uh, above the head of the public, it is very dangerous. So, <laughs> <laughs> so but uh, in New York, I believe that uh, we don't, they don't have an earthquake, but you had an earthquake two few weeks ago. <laughs> so I, it was very scary. And uh, I believe that uh, you don't have a typhoon in New York, but uh, you had a hurricane. Uh, so oh, this structure experienced so many different behavior. Yeah, hurricane is also another behavior in a big, m bigger scale. And uh, earthquake is also behavior. The, the last one we got uh, in Tohoku area, it is said it's uh, a, a once a thousand year. And uh, it is huge. Um, uh, uh, earthquake and uh, the tsunami was uh, extremely huge but uh, it is also behavior of the, the earthquake and uh, we need to know we need to uh, understand we need to find the, the way to live with this kind, kind of behaviors so behavior is not always uh, um, good for people. Uh, some, some behavior by some agents are very bad. But if we really, if you, we understand very well these behavior, I think uh, we can control them or we can let them behave in a, a, a better way for human beings. This is what we are doing in architecture. And uh, <coughs> The behavior is uh, uh, behavior. Uh, uh, another aspect of behavior is, which I'm very interested in, is each behavior have its own time scale. So let's see the human being, the, the uh, behavior of the human beings. If you want, and um, if you won't observe the very basic uh, instinct of uh, uh, human beings in a, like uh, wake up in the morning and uh, have a meal and uh, go to a school or office and work and uh, have lunch and uh, 
have coffee and then tired and go to go back to the home and uh, have dinner and uh, sleep and wake up again and this is a repetition and uh, <coughs> you need one day to observe it but uh, but uh, more this is uh, uh, yeah, daily behavior of the people but uh, more commun uh, so society level society uh, uh, level we, you need m maybe one week to understand yeah from Monday to Friday uh, people work and weekend people don't work or if you want to understand the behavior uh, 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 of the community you need to know you need to wait for a year to, to see everything and um, <coughs> if and behavior is not only human beings uh, yeah as I said uh, light uh, wind and humidity and uh, uh, heat also behave uh, based on its physical nature and uh, for example if you want to be observe the uh, rise of the temperature in your room from the very early in the morning to the uh, uh, noon, yeah, maybe three degrees. Uh, 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 how do you say, rays of the uh, temperature. You need maybe three hours to observe it. Or, <coughs> or in a bigger scale, if you want to observe hurricane, you need uh, one year to observe. And uh, and also we have uh, we also consider building behave. Building also behave. Yeah, in this kind of a temporary structure. Ah, oh yeah, this is temporary structure for ten weeks, and after New York, it's going to travel to Berlin, and uh, <coughs> and after that, Mumbai. So in this kind of temporary buildings, it's easy to say, oh yeah, people are all building behave uh, in a short period. But uh, even the building made of brick, made of uh, concrete, made of wood, um, if you take 90, uh, 50 years long time scale, 100 years long time scale, uh, in the city, there, is, there are always a regeneration of the buildings. And uh, you can observe the behavior of the buildings. And uh, so this gives, uh, so, if you s watch what's happening uh, around and inside of the building from behavioral behavior point of view, you can bring so many different time scale by reacting or playing with different behavior. And this is what I think very important because uh, the time scale is which is something missed in 20th century architecture. And, uh, and then it became more and more uh, photogenic, became more and more artistic, and it, be it became more and more distanced from the people. But now I think it's time to bring back architecture into more close to the people. And uh, otherwise, we don't know why we have to make buildings. And um, <coughs> this is what I'm really think about. <coughs>